Hello everybody, Jack here, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to use Rune Lights, how to install plugins, where screenshots are saved by default, how to scale your UI. I'll also show you how to make the game full screen. As you can see, there's no Windows bar or anything. You don't need to worry about Rune Light, even if you're playing all day. It's not something that Jagex is against. And it's something that makes the game more enjoyable. RuneScape can be very tedious. And this tediousness doesn't add to the gameplay experience. You can use RuneLight to eliminate almost all of that tediousness. So first off, we're going to talk about scaling your UI and making the game full screen. These are actually Windows settings, not settings in RuneLight. I'm going to show you how to do this in Windows 10. Press start and then type taskbar. This will bring up taskbar settings. Or make sure that automatically hide the de taskbar in desktop mode is set to on. This is going to make rune light full screen if you click the maximize icon here. In addition to that, we can change the size of our UI elements. Press the Windows hotkey, and then type display. This should bring up change the size of text, apps, and other items. Scroll down until you get to scale and layout. Here, the default will be 125%. And as you can see, everything got a little bit smaller. If you want a really big UI, then set it to 175. And look, in RuneScape, the UI takes up most of the screen. If we go back and we set it to just 100, then our UI is really tiny. As you can see, the UI has become very small. So in RuneScape, your UI scaling is actually affected by your operating system, not settings in the game itself. RuneLight also captures screenshots automatically. You can also manually take a screenshot within RuneLight by clicking this Take Screenshot button at the top right. Once you've taken a screenshot, or if you want to access RuneLight's automatic screenshots, taken every time you level, complete a quest, etc., then open up your C drive. From here, go to Users. Click on the main username. And then click on dot RuneLight. From here, go to Screenshots. To verify the path, here it is. Users, your username, dot rune light, and then screenshots. Open the character name, and you'll be able to find all of the screenshots from every time that you've leveled. You can also find any time you get a reward, a clue scroll reward, or any time you finish a quest. As you can see, this is a screenshot from when I finished The Great Brain Robbery. Now, we're going to talk about how to use rune light and how to navigate the settings. Once you've logged into RuneLight, if you look at the top right, you can see this configuration button. Clicking this will bring up a panel with a bunch of different options. Each option has the name of the option, a settings cog for more configuration, and then an enable button. If the toggle for enable is orange, it means the plugin is enabled. If it is gray, that means the plugin is disabled. When you first run RuneLight, there's a couple things that I recommend doing. The first most noticeable thing, and the main reason that I use RuneLight, is the draw distance. As you can see, RuneScape just renders a kind of small area, and it looks really obvious there's this big box, right? And for you, this is going to be black. I'll show you how to change it to a more sky-like color. Click on the settings and search for sky box. Click on the cogwheel. Now you can pick exactly what color you want it to be. Let's say that I wanted to make this more kind of gray. I could scroll down, or let's say I wanted to make it black entirely. What we have to do is click exit here, and boom, the color has changed to black. I actually prefer it to be a kind of light blue sky. This is the most pleasing for my eye. Once you've enabled the skybox, the next setting to mess with is the render distance. This is controlled by the GPU plugin. Look for GPU, and then 
click edit. You want to set the draw distance to 70 and the fog depth to 5. Honestly, all the other stuff doesn't really matter. It barely makes a difference. Watch what these tiny changes do. Look at that. Boom. Suddenly, I can distantly see in RuneScape. This also means that you can walk a lot further. For example, if I click all the way over here, my character is going to path all the way over there, even though it's actually further than my minimap can click. This reduces the amount of clicking you spend traveling. However, keep in mind that you cannot interact with objects that are further away in that rendered distance. As you can see, I can chop down this tree right here. But these trees off in the distance are in the, the extra rendered distance. So we can't actually interact with any of them unless we get closer. This is the most useful and cool part of RuneLight. If you aren't able to enable your GPU, there's some troubleshooting that you can do to fix that. The most likely problem is that you have installed the 32-bit version of RuneLight, which will run, but this GPU setting will fail. So, if this GPU setting makes your RuneLight crash, then all you need to do is reinstall RuneLight as the 64-bit version of the software. Then it should work properly. Aside from that, the only other common problem with the GPU plugin is that you are using a laptop with two graphics cards and you have to change the graphics card that RuneLight is using by default. Next, let's talk about plugins. When you first load RuneLight, these are all the default plugins. However, there are actually custom-made plugins that you can download. Make sure you read this warning because there's no guarantees with any of these plugins. They may cause RuneLight to be buggy or cause your computer to slow down. The RuneLight team verifies that the plugin isn't malicious or rule-breaking. But aside from that, they don't look at it at all. So you can see the most common plugins here. And if you want to search for a plugin, you just search for it and then find it and then click install. Once it's installed, the plugin will show up here. For example, if we go down and we look for Q for quest, we can find the quest helper plugin. And if we want to change the settings, we can click here. This is the same thing that you'll do every time you install a new plugin in RuneLight. You don't need to worry about getting banned using RuneLight. People don't get banned. People get banned for botting and spending loads of hours every day logged in. What JGEX focuses on is banning people who are using tools so much that they're playing more than a normal player has the time to play. You don't need to worry about RuneLight, even if you're playing all day. It's not something that JGEX is against, and it's something that makes the game more enjoyable. RuneScape can be very tedious, and this tediousness doesn't add to the gameplay experience. You can use RuneLight to eliminate almost all of that tediousness. And there's also some other stuff that you can do with RuneLight that's pretty crazy. For example, you can actually get rid of all player characters. To get rid of all other players showing up on the screen, search for Entity. That's E-N-T-I and see Entity Hider. If you click on the settings here, you can see that you have a bunch of things you can hide. If I click enable, I can literally make every single person disappear. Except this guy, because I put him on my ignore list. If I click hide ignores, then the ignored player also disappears. See that? You can do a whole bunch of stuff with RuneLight that's pretty crazy. You can pretty much make RuneScape a one-player experience where you don't even see people's messages if you really want to. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this kind of tutorial, then please comment below and let me know something else that you want to learn about. I love making tutorials. Even if it's something you're confused by or if you think it's not possible, I'll find a way to make a tutorial about it 
for you. So comment below and tell me, what do you want to learn? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.